Well, you bunch of freaking jerks will not give up on this kicker talk. We got to talk about kicker, 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 kicker. I told you I don't want to talk about it. Andres is going to win the job. Give it up. Let it go. Stop it. But uh, no, we got to talk about it. We got to debate and argue and everything else. So fine, I, I have to spend all this time looking into kickers. I'm only half mad. I'm actually kind of excited because I learn a lot of stuff when I do this. Just things you don't really think about thinking about. You know, like what does it mean to even be a good kicker? What, what numbers are you looking for? What are we talking about? That's what I care about anyway. Some people just like to just kick and scream and complain and whine. Um, and I'm not going to pretend to solve all the world's problems today when it comes to kicker, but I, I would like to put some things into proper perspective. And uh, at least we can move the conversation forward out of the depths of nonsense and at least start having some serious conversations about what it is we're looking for in a kicker, what it is we hope that our kicker can do this year, things of that nature. So I started by... Um, I figure the best way to start is to just say, what, what do Packer fans even want? What do you want? And you can't be mad at me if, if it's like, well, that's not fair because people haven't... Well, then you shouldn't be talking if you don't know. I tried to make it as easy as possible. I said, what would you deem to be an acceptable field goal rate? I said acceptable. I didn't say ideal. I didn't say perfect. I said acceptable. In other words, you'd stop whining about it. Being a little mean, but let's just call it what it is. No more whining. What, what would it take? And I even went so far as to say, this is kind of the range that we're talking about in case you're just more interested in that. Um, but I doubt it. It's more for context than anything else. And so I'm just looking for a plurality. I'm looking for half the fan base, more than half the fan base will be satisfied. So as you can see here, 86%, which is about top 15, top half of the league-ish, um, You've got 48% plus everybody that would be okay from this range. So we're talking, uh, you know, 60, 70%-ish are fine with this. Okay. But it's not just field goals. So I said, what about extra points? Same question. 95% um, is top 20-ish. 97% puts you in the top 15-ish. I say ish because I went back a couple of years to kind of get a general idea. 100% puts you in about the top 10. 21% want to see 100%. Anything under that apparently is not acceptable. 51% um, said top 15 again, so that's kind of the, the, the standard. And then, of course, you've got the 27% that say 95. So we're at 78, 79% that are okay with 97% or... Uh, yeah, yeah, 97% or better. I always get confused about that. And then the final question is, because you've got to have some variability in there, because you can't just go back and say, well, some people don't always hit that standard. Okay, but what, what are people okay with? Can you, out of five years, have no bad years? One bad year, two bad years? 6% said you're not allowed to have any bad years. And this, this, is, this is the fan base, by the way, that will never accept any amount of missed kicks or any bad years, which means they're just... they're they're admitting they're never going to be happy with any kicker ever. Um, then you start getting some reasonable people where 37.5% uh, said one bad year out of five is acceptable. 52.3% said two bad years is acceptable. 3.9% said three years is acceptable. So we're going to say two or less is acceptable. So what does that mean? 86% or better field goal rate. 97% extra point rate and two years at most where you don't hit these standards. Two years at most. All right. Couple things now. Just so we're all clear here. Let's bring this up. Do you want to know? Here's here's last year. So we've got the extra points you can see. Here's all the guys that had 100. Um the field goal rates are here. And then you can obviously, you know, some people want to say, you know, anything under 50 should be this rate. Again, we can get more nuanced as time goes on, but let's just start with the basics. Okay. Do you know how many kickers meet these qualifications that Packers fans say? I'm not saying is great, it's just acceptable. It's baseline. I'll stop whining. Justin Tucker and Dicker the kicker. And that's it. Those are the only two in the NFL right now that meet those qualifications and dicker's only been doing it for two years as you can see the guy's a freak 96 percent 
and 94% on his um, field goals, not his extra points, and he has not missed a, an extra point in his two years here. Justin Tucker, in his five years, um, if you round up, you know, 97%, he's got 96.6 and 96.9. If you round up, I believe he is five for five. Nobody else is five for five or four of five or even three of five with those standards. Nobody. And I, I, I didn't just say, okay, find the guys that did it this year and then see if they've... No, I picked every single one of these 41 kickers and I looked at them and I said, is there a five-year stretch? Because maybe this is one of the down years, right? You can still qualify with this being one of the down years. Nope. These are your only two, Justin Tucker and Cameron Dicker. That's it. If you look at Green Bay Packers kickers, I don't know if I have that anywhere. It's going to be impossible for me to find it. Mason Crosby never did it, ever. And I saw some people saying, yeah, well, that's because Mason Crosby was over, always overrated. Okay, let me rephrase. There has only ever been one kicker over one five-year stretch, 2000 to 2004, in which anybody has ever met these qualifications. There is no five-year stretch in the entire history of the Green Bay Packers organization where any kicker has met those qualifications outside of Ryan Longwell, and only in that five-year span, if you go from 2001 to 2005, he doesn't make the cut. So it's, it's, we have to start with the realization that we have way too high a standards, and we don't know what it means to be a good enough kicker, and we need to start coming up with our own actual standards. If we're going to complain about stuff, we should know what we're complaining about. What is the actual problem and thing that you don't like, and what are you complaining about? Furthermore, this probably goes without saying, but I pulled up the available free agents that everybody's saying we got to start looking. We got to start looking, boys and girls. We really, we got to see what's out there. How many free agents that are out there do you think meet the qualifications that only Cam Dicker and Justin Tucker meet? Come on. Here's Mason Crosby. He had 85%, 94, 96, 93. Got to go back to 2019 for him to have an acceptable extra point rate and um in that time let's see the last three years he only would have had the field goal rate once that was 2022 in the last three years so in in his last three four years in green bay he really didn't hit any of those years where he hit uh, as being good enough now again i think packer fans were generally satisfied with years like 2022 which, again, means we need to kind of lower under our understanding because we look at it and we say, look, 86%, you know, Anders is at 80-some-odd percent. That's not good enough. Well, we were kind of okay with, I think, you know, 86, 85, 84, 83. I think we can deal with some of that. Maybe. I don't know. That's the thing. You, you kind of got... It's, it's, I, th I genuinely think it's more of a feel thing. Like, were we mad in 2018 at Mason Crosby? Maybe. I don't know. He made 95% of his kicks... 81.1% of his field goals, which is about what Honors did as far as field goals. Not extra points, but field goals. Here's Ryan Suckup. Same thing, right? His uh, extra points hasn't hit uh, the acceptable extra point range since 2014, although this is pretty close, 96%. His field goal rate, though, you'd have to go back to 2020. You could say, you know, this year, but his extra point rate is too low. So when did he hit on both marks? He just doesn't. I mean, Suckup is not that guy. Now, is he better than what Anders was giving us? Yeah, he was. Here's Anders, by the way. Um, we'll get back to that in a second. We'll go to the regular season in 2023. He had 87% of his extra points. So if Bullock is giving you, um, or Suckup is giving you 96% or 94% or even 91%, it's an improvement. You got Bullock here, and then you got Robbie Gold, who I think is the one guy that when I looked at it, if, if Packer fans are saying, because he's 42 years old, if Packer fans are saying, I don't care about the future, I just want a guy that's reliable this year, I feel like this would be the only uh, possible option for the Packers. And he hasn't, he didn't play in 2023. For all I know, the guy's retired. I don't know. There you go. I dug it up. So he announced his retirement after 18 NFL seasons, so that's why he didn't play last year. So there is no Robbie Gold. So that's not an option. So we don't have an option. There is no free agent that's going to come in and save you. 
And if you want just any old guy that kind of sets a floor, the, the problem I have with that is how do you know that the guy we have now can't do it? Right? I mean, why are we giving up on Anders Carlson? We know that the extra point thing wasn't good last year. Right? The extra point thing. And the field goal thing was down to 82%. You'd like that to be a little bit higher. If you can get it up to 85 from 82, I think Packer fans will be a little bit more okay with it. The extra point thing was the biggest issue. He's 34 of 39, which even that, if you think about it, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> it jumps up tremendously if you just add one more extra point. But how do we know he isn't better? Well, he's having a bad camp. Is he? Is he having a bad camp? How do you know he's having a bad camp? Based on what? Let me pull this aside for just a second. This is what we're going to look at next. The problem that I'm hearing, and I think according to what a lot of people have, I so here's what I did, just so we're clear. I went back and, and looked at every single one of his kicks. Now, there are people that are tracking it. He has made this much of this much, and they give you a percentage, but that's not good enough. I want to know distance, because if somebody makes 7 of 10 55-yard kicks compared to 7 of 10 extra points, there's a big difference in how you look at that. One of those is awesome. One of those is, is kind of garbage. So it's not all the same. Not all things are created equal. So I want to know every single one of his kicks, what the distance was and whether or not he made it. So here's what I came up with. Here's every single one. Here's the date range. Here's the range and then whether they made it or not. And then I've also got the year of the wind. There was a super windy day out there. It was also a, a massive torrential rainstorm, I think, on one day, and I think he made all of those kicks, etc. Okay? Here are his percentages. Extra points. Eight of eight. The biggest issue everybody has with him is that his extra points sucked last year. And we need a new kicker. Why? Because he's not getting better. Based on what? The fact that he hasn't missed an extra point in camp yet? Kicks in the 30-yard range. He is 4 of 4. They don't do that very often. The reason his percentage is low is because a lot of these kicks are a lot longer than what you find in games. There's tons of 30-yard kicks, distances in the 30s, in games. They don't practice them very often. There's only been a handful, four to be exact, inside of the 30-yard range. <clears throat> you know, from 30 to 39. But he is 100%. In the 40-yard range, he is 31 of 38. 81.58%, and he is 10 of 16, 62.5%. So let's go back here. Let's look at these kickers. Where are my things here? Here we go. This is 2023. 100%. So he is in that sort of top 10 range as of right now. 8 of 8. Graham Gano was, you know, 8 of 8. In the, there are none in here. None of these kicks in the 20 to 29 yard range. In the 30 to 39 yard range, he also has 100%. So he's 100% in both extra points and field goals inside of the 30. So if we come back here and look at it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kickers that did that last year. In the 40 yard range, he has, let me look again real quick what it was 81.58%. So that is. He would have been 18th last year. Not the greatest in the world, but about top half-ish. And then 62.5% from the 50-ish yard range. So he would have been, uh, I guess, 20th in that range. And again, a lot of these were very, very far. To be fair, there's a ton of, not 50, 55 yarders, 54 yarders. There was also a 57 yarder that he hit on, um, I believe it was family night, and then they decided to ice the kicker. Their own team, the Packers, iced their own freaking kicker. So after he made the 57-yarder, he had to go back out, and then he missed it. So instead of a 57-yarder in the win column, it was in the loss column. But still, let's go back to Anders Carlson here. Three of five. I mean, it, I think most people were okay with his 50-plus yard kicks. It's an improvement. If you look at his 40-plus yard kicks... It went from 50% to 81.5%. His 30-yard kicks have remained at 100%, and his extra points have gone from 87.2% to 100% in camp. What do you want? Every single thing has improved. Everything. 
His, uh, I think, what was it? On the wind day, he missed two kicks, and both of them were in the 40-yard range. So that would have brought his, if, if we just look at it from that standpoint, that would have brought it to 33. Um, that would put him at 86. I'll put it back down, but just so we're clear, um, or if you just get rid of the wind day entirely, point is, his, his kick percentage in the 40s goes up pretty substantially. It was a horrible day. And again, another horrible day, he went undefeated in the, in the monsoon. So I'm not trying to say Anders Carlson is the best possible answer. I'm just trying to say, number one, what is, what is it you were looking for in a kicker? And why is it we think, based on what we've seen from Anders, he's not capable of being the guy? Is he not capable of being a guy that can make 85% of field goals? And 97% of extra points. I mean, what, what, what have we seen to make us think that that's the case? I'm just curious. I have no idea. So, again, let me show you this. 8 of 8 in the extra point range. 30s, 4 of 4. 40s, 31 of 38. 50s, he's 10 of 16. With one of those misses, again, being a make from 57 yards on family night. He is right now by far, I think, our best kicking option with um, Greg Joseph completely falling off a cliff. He was never really a great option. Um, if we pull that up real quick, Greg Joseph. Greg Joseph, just as a refresher, he started with Cleveland. They booted him. He went to Tennessee. Then they booted him. He goes to Minnesota, and he plays three years there. His field goal percentage was 87, and his extra point was 90. So this is not good enough for Packer fans, but I'm sure it's still an improvement, and they would have not super complained about it. The problem is after that, it dropped off, the field goal percentage. He dropped to 78.8 and 80% of his field goals. Both of those field goals are worse than what Anders Carlson gave. And the extra points were not all that much better. In 2023, his extra points did go up to 95%. But that's still not quite what Packer fans say that they want. Greg Joseph has never been the kind of kicker that anybody wants. There is no upside. By the way, Daniel Carlson. Everybody talks about how, you know, Anders isn't going to become Daniel Carlson. Daniel Carlson isn't even good enough by Packer standards. Packer fans' standards. He is a good kicker. So I, I, I guess the issue is, if we actually look at the fact that Packer fans are expecting too much, then we need to lower our standards. And if you say, well, yeah, okay, we can lower our standards, but Anders isn't that. The problem is you don't know that he isn't that. You don't know. So if, you, if you're willing to lower your standards, which you have to be because the standards are way too high, and if you acknowledge what a reasonable standard is, and then you look at what Anders Carlson has done this year, there's no reason for us to be pitching a fit that Anders has to go. None. So can we just stop? And just wait. And it, first of all, acknowledge Anders will be the kicker. Second of all, acknowledge that he has seemingly taken strides. And third of all, hope that we see a better version of Anders Carlson this year. And that his development continues this year and beyond to, be, to maybe become a good enough kicker to be as good or better than Mason Crosby, as good or better than his brother, Daniel Carlson, who took a couple years to develop. By the way, I think Daniel Carlson was year three. We're going into year two with honors. We've seen one year and everybody wants to give up. I don't know. I don't, I don't fully understand what the issue is. So, so I want to bring up this as well. I, I just thought of it. I saw a lot of people were talking about clutch and I, I don't know in the comments section if they're deliberately saying this is what I don't like about honors or just something else that needs to be considered, but I thought we'd bring it up. Um, I just wanted to look into it. I, I couldn't really think of a way to do it, and then I came up with this. There might be a better way, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Two different standards of clutch that I went on. I'm sure you can come up with a bunch of others, but here is what I came up with, and there's not a lot. So this is a situation where you're talking fourth quarter or overtime within a three-point margin, meaning tied through down three points. Um, Anders Carlson has only kicked 
two extra points and one field goal in this situation. And this is the entire fourth quarter, not like 10 seconds left, none of that kind of stuff. This is the entire fourth quarter or overtime. One field goal. And it was a game-winning field goal. It was 22 seconds left against the Carolina Panthers, game tied. He made the field goal. They went up 33-30, uh, to 30, and that won the game. The other two situations were, um, interestingly enough, we did win that game by one point. But eight minutes and a half, uh, eight and a half minutes left in the Broncos game in the fourth quarter. And then in the Saints game, again, we won by one. Um Fourth quarter, two minutes, 56 seconds left. The other is just postseason. Postseason kicks. Now, they have every single kick. There's, if, if you're looking at this on YouTube or whatever, you can see the, the kickoffs and whatnot. But extra points and field goals. <clears throat> so we've got... Um, let's do this. Let's go by, by uh, game here. So we've got, in the 49ers game, there was an extra point... Two field goals that he made and one field goal missed. That was in the fourth quarter. I've seen a lot of people reference that as being some kind of a, a massive thing. And, of course, you don't want to miss miss out on three points. We did lose by four, so it wasn't. that's why it didn't fall within that span of fourth quarter within three because it was outside of three points. You still want to make the kicks, but whatever. And then in the Dallas game, there were quite a few. Most of them were extra points. Extra point, good, 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 good. And then he missed an extra point here, which obviously is not great, and then uh, made another one here. So one, two, three, four, five. He made six extra points in that game and then uh, missed another one. What an absolutely ridiculous thing that is. Um, so, I, I mean, again, I'm, I, of course I don't want you missing any extra points, right, ideally. Um, but as far as, like, clutchness in these situations, again... The, the different kinds of clutchness that I can think of. You got one, two, three, four kicks, four field goals, actually, and he made three of four. You'd prefer four out of four, but he made three out of four. Um, and, and again, the idea isn't that he was great last year. It's a matter of what are some things that you're looking for and what do you hope that he gets better at. Um I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't see like this is catastrophically bad if that was kind of a, uh, a thing that was brought up. So, if you can think of other kinds of clutchness, I mean, you can, you can break this down a million different ways. Um, you know, in terms of if you want to encompass the games where you're not necessarily down by three, you're, you're any kick within, you know, the fourth quarter or whatever. I don't know. Um, you could do that as well, but as far as clutchness goes, there weren't really a lot of opportunities, maybe four field goals. So wanted to bring that up also real quick.